another video, another super precarious stand for my camera. Hi! Are you watching this video because you think something might be wrong with your mini pig? Don't! Stop this video and call your vet. If you are here because you are interested in educating yourself about mini pigs, you have a pig and you want to know what things to watch out for or how to avoid these things happening to your pig, this is a great video for you. Over the course of uh, pig ownership the last eight years, I've been extremely fortunate because I want to sit on the floor right now. <laughs> Bye. Uh, I've been very fortunate because I've not really had any huge pig emergencies. I've had, of course, things go wrong, pigs need medical attention. I've taken in a lot of the rescues that need pretty extensive rehabbing, but all things considered, as many pigs as I've had and as long as I've had them for, I've been pretty fortunate. Having said that, probably one of the biggest emergencies I've encountered happened uh, just last week. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I had to rush Scarlett to the vet and she had to stay there for a little over 24 hours. She woke me up around 4 a.m., which in itself is a little bit alarming because normally she has no problem sleeping through the night. So she woke me up around 4 and she just wasn't right. It wasn't super alarming at that point in time, but it pretty quickly escalated. Um, she just seemed out of it and she was shaking. One thing that it is important for you to know how to do and unfortunately be comfortable doing is taking your pig's temperature. You are going to do that rectally. Don't Google that. Have the vet show you how. <laughs> it's important to know how to take your pig's temperature. I did and she had a little bit of a fever, not excessive, but enough that I knew that something was going on. From there, I pretty much didn't sleep. No, I didn't at all. I didn't fall back asleep. I just kind of monitor. One thing that you have to worry about with pigs is what's called salt, salt poisoning. Now this can occur from eating foods that are high in sodium, but more often than not, it happens when a pig is deprived of water for too long. And then when they either eat a ton of salt or don't get enough water, and then they chug water, creates a swelling on the brain, essentially. Long story short. So make sure your pig always has fresh water and watch what they eat. This is a great reason why you don't want to give them other species foods. I hear people give their pigs um, dog food and cat food all the time. That is not right for them. And you don't want to give them table food, junk food, potato chips, cereal, things like that. The sodium is way too high. That's always my first concern. So to potentially combat that, uh, I started syringing water to her in small quantities over a long period of time. So for a few hours, every 20 minutes or so, little syringe of water. Ultimately, you would want to take your pig to the vet, 100%. But since this wasn't showing the standard signs of salt poisoning, and it was 4 a.m., uh, that's what we did. Monitored her temperature, made sure she was staying hi hydrated in small amounts. She started seeming really disoriented, um, losing her balance, really hunched over, uh, her breathing got a little more wheezy and labored, and she started walking backwards only in circles. So that's when I called the vet and said we're coming in. <laughs> Took her in. Again, she stayed there overnight. Uh, her fever was up to 105, pretty high for a pig. When it was all said and done, $550 later, they didn't really know what it was. She was better. The antibiotics, the fluids, the hospitalization, all of that fixed whatever it was, but we still don't know what. What matters is that she's back home, she's doing great, and I am just not gonna question that. But it did inspire me to make this video. Salt deprivation, we've covered that now. I don't wanna say it's a common problem with mini pigs, but it occurs frequently enough that it's important to be sure you're taking steps to prevent it. And you know how to recognize it quickly and get them to a vet. Another issue that is seen semi-regularly in mini pigs and can be completely avoided is um, hypoglycemia. This tends to be more apparent in smaller pigs, but there's some debate over whether that's genetically predisposed or whether it's because smaller pigs are sometimes the ones that are more frequently not being given the nutrients they need. Regardless of which is more factual, it is a reason why you do not want to deprive your pig of food. You want to be sure. I'm not gonna insert the body score image again. You can find it in my other videos, but that's what I'm referencing. You wanna be sure your pig stays in the healthy range. 
if your pig is too skinny and you're not feeding it enough, it could very easily basically go into shock and a coma with hypoglycemia. They go down very fast. It's why I make sure my pigs get banana in the morning because that little boost of sugar and vitamins is a great way to be sure that they are getting what they need the minute they wake up. Go to the vet immediately. Or just be sure that your pig is always eating enough. If your pig ever declines a meal, something's probably wrong. Pigs are always hungry. They will eat and eat and eat they will eat themselves sick, actually. That's another thing to watch for, overeating. But if your pig doesn't eat, odds are very good you have a sick pig. So those are two of the preventable, semi-common problems that you see in mini pigs. Some of the less serious things, uh, just general health awareness that every pig owner should know, uh, trimming their hooves, they do need to be kept trimmed. Pig dry skin. Pigs almost always have dry skin. They're always itchy, but if your pig is itching excessively and it is creating any kind of open sores, if they have kind of a red coppery color all over their bodies, they probably have pig mites, sarcoptic mange, commonly pig mites. This can be contracted from the soil even, uh, very common in pigs. And it's why you wanna be sure to always worm your pig. There are two types of wormers you wanna use. Ivamec is the one that is going to treat the mites and some other little parasites, Safeguard is going to treat different parasites. It's important that you give both warmers in conjunction because they do address different parasites. I'm not gonna give doses or frequency or any other information because you can overdose your pig on these. So you need to make sure that you're giving exactly what your pig should have. So talk to your vet. Keeping up with warming your pig, making sure, I mean, this, some of these are basic. Make sure your pig is being wormed regularly. Make sure your pig is getting the food and the water that it needs. Make sure that you know how to recognize some of these emergency signs. Make sure you have a vet, not after something happens, but before that you've located your nearest pig vet because not all vets, and in fact, very few vets uh, will see pigs. And even fewer of the vets that will see pigs are actually really familiar with how to treat them. Of course, there are a ton of other <laughs> pig health concerns, as with any animal. Um, some of them are similar to dog and cat potential health issues. Some of them are very pig exclusive. These are just some of the, again, the more commonly seen things and, um, and the ones that can be avoided. Again, it was none of these things that actually caused Scarlett to become so ill so fast. Uh, it was terrifying for me though and heartbreaking. And those 24 hours, I was of a rut. They took great care of her. I don't care how much it costs. I just wanted her to be better and she is. It wasn't any of these things that I mentioned in the video but again it just kind of inspired me. If I can save some other pig owners from going through that horrible feeling I would love to. I'm not a pig expert. I'm not a doctor but hopefully I can help a couple of pigs and a couple of people. Rory what are you doing in my garden? Get your butt out of there. This is the no dog zone. It's supposed to be the no weed zone too though, and that's not working so well. Get back in your yard, young lady.